Hey Trails Collective, Ian here with the next round of shoe reviews. Uh, in this one, I am going to take you through uh, a rundown of Solomon's Cross Pro. Cause I wanna be like the wind. I wanna run with you. I we can be wolves. Howling at the gray line. I wanna be by your side when we light up the sky for the world to see. Let's start with some of the specs. Uh, weight, uh, men's US size nine weighs in at uh, 10 ounces or roughly 285 grams. Uh, women's 250 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces. Uh, sizing for me, for me is true to size in terms of length. Specs, uh, insole that's in here, uh, which is a molded EVA material is uh, four millimeters. Uh, so a little bit of cush. I like the insole that's in here because it's a closed cell, uh, well, EVA. It doesn't take on water uh, like some of the other outsoles uh, on the market. And it also has uh, perforations or holes through it to allow water to uh, push up through if it does happen to get in the shoe. Uh, the uh, lugs uh, exterior of the shoe uh, are five millimeters. And the combined stack from insole through to outsole lugs uh, which you'll see listed is 29.5 millimeters in the heel, uh, 21.5 millimeters in the forefoot. In some Salmon models in the past, the listed stacks didn't really add up. Uh, these come on uh, to my in-house measures uh, using my own digital caliper uh, pretty much right on. So uh, that's what you got in terms of stack with a uh, drop of eight millimeters higher in the heel versus the forefoot. Uh, no rock plate and price comes in at 160. All right, so let's take you through some of the materials design uh, and whether I think there could be improvements uh, made uh, starting from the top down. So one of the most notable things, uh, similar to the uh, S-Lab Cross, is just how kind of badass the, the upper looks uh, in these models. So the what Salmon's using uh, to create the material in the upper, which is an, kind of an industrial knit feeling uh, material, is a proprietary material and process or combination of materials and process, which they're terming twin skin. And twin skin is basically they are uh, creating a, a tubular knit design uh, similar to a sock that they are uh, rolling back over itself to create a second layer. And when they roll it back and over, they are shaping it over a uh, designated last or certain uh, materials in the shoe, which I'll cover here in a second. And they're heat uh, welding that, and it uh, fuses into basically a one part like sock upper. It's really quite cool. Uh, if you look at, it may be tough to see in the lighting here, but if you look inside of the shoe underneath the insole, uh, you'll see that it truly is a kind of a mono knit sock. It's all one piece. It's really, again, it's really cool. Uh, the welding around the last, uh, for instance, in some of the components, you may be able to see here some of the contour around the toe cap, rather than having a fully uh, welded on TPU toe cap, which many of the uh, outsoles, or I mean uh, uppers, and even some of the higher end shoes at the moment are using is this welded on TPU. Really nice in terms of how soft it is, how flexible it is, good for abrasion resistance. Uh, in some cases, it doesn't allow as much water to uh, leave the shoe as it could, but pretty nice. Uh, what the uh, Cross Pro is doing is into that uh, tubular knit material and welding, they have a kind of embedded toe cap that you'll find here. If you look around the, the heel collar, or flex the back of the shoe, it also has a semi-rigid heel cup back here. Uh, and that's also coming from just the last of the materials that they put in there and then fuse together. That sock material extends right up over the vamp uh, and it has an integrated tongue with uh, fairly uh, um, minimal spot padding. And then it comes up fairly high over the instep. Right out of the box, I was wondering whether it was going to have some of the same weaknesses that I found in uh, one of my uh, recent tests, which was the flight vective from uh, North Face. I'll plug a, a clip uh, here of it, 
One of the issues that I had was, well, I love the material in the upper. It was a really soft, nice knit material. It was enclosed by quarter panels using the matrix uh, material for uh, stability and off camber surfaces. But around the heel collar, it just had a bit of a gap where they had padding uh, below the malleoli or ankle bones. And what I found was when you're running, it just allowed debris to drop down into that padding and with a couple foot motions or footfalls, it would basically pull the debris down into the shoe. Otherwise, I thought it was a really slick upper. So I was wondering whether the Cross Pro was going to fall victim to the same uh, design uh, weakness, I guess. Uh, and what I found was in my first run out of the box, we had that week a uh, snowfall of about uh, 20 inches. Uh, and so I started off uh, a wreckway behind uh, my house and the middle mile and a half I was post holing through 20 inches deep of uh, basically wet powder and the for that mile and a half of post holing literally only I think snow penetrated maybe or snow slush penetrated maybe the top inch it never got down into the shoe uh, or past that uh, heel collar. And so what I found was that, and in, in my first reaction was, wow, Salmon just nailed this design in terms of a knit upper that, that really works. Uh, so I was, really, I was really stoked about that, and I think it works really well. The upper is then encapsulated by these uh, quarter panels, which use the matrix fiber, or matrix uh, fabric, rather. For those of you who have also caught my reviews, you've known, well, I've commented on the matrix in the uh, Salmon S-Lab Cross, uh, as well as uh, the North Face Vective series. As a material, I think Matrix works really well. It's a thin, uh, malleable fabric that has Kevlar or, uh, uh, yeah, Kevlar or Aramid uh, woven through it, so exceptional durability as well as support. So with the industrial twin skin fabric already offering, I think, quite a bit of integrity, uh, paired with the quarter panels here of Matrix, the shoe does a really exceptional job of holding you on off-camber surfaces as well as, as if you're uh, pitching on ascents or descents. The material Matrix is also hydrophobic, uh, so it works uh, really well to uh, allow water to pass through but not hang on to it. The twin skin material is treated to allow it to, uh, for some of the water to bead off or run off, what I did notice was though for uh, full submersion, once the fabric is wet, it stays wet for a while. It doesn't really feel, um, it doesn't slosh at all because it's embedded in the fabric. It doesn't feel cold, it's almost like wool. I can just tell that the water's there. Uh, so really nice design. The uh, quarter panel matrix quarter panels here are pulled together by a Salomon uh, quick lace, which many of you already may be familiar with. And then it has two elastic loops or bands right there that you can tick tuck the quick lace uh, under after you lace it up and to keep it secure over the foot. One of the areas I think for improvement. So for myself, I didn't really have many issues with the upper. I do like it, but two things that I think for you to be aware of and where people may have an issue is uh, how much it rises up on the what would be the tongue. I think that may come up a little bit high on some people's insteps. Again, I didn't have any problems with it, but I can see some people might. The other part is in just the way that they have to form the twin skin and mold it around this internal heel cup, it has a fairly straight cut back here and not much of a depth to the heel pocket. And so what I felt in running in it, and I had it I think as much as uh, my long run was maybe two and a half, three hours in it, around 20 miles, uh, I noticed each run a little bit of heat around my uh, calcaneus or my heel. And basically what I think is happening is because the twin skin is fairly industrial in feel. It's not that soft. Uh, it also has some striations to the fabrics with the knit. And just a little bit of gravitation without a deep heel pocket, I think creates a little bit of heat, heat back around the uh, calcaneus. For so, so for somebody who may have a calcaneal cleft or a really prominent calcaneus, it may not necessarily be the most comfortable fit or it may not get close enough to the Achilles to have that same wrap. Um, so again, that's something to be aware of, even though I didn't really have any issues with it. The Salmon Cross Pro, allowing you to dig in in snowball fights since 2020. Salmon Cross Pro. 
the midsole. Uh, midsole there using Energy Cell Plus. As I've mentioned also in my review of the Wild Cross, Energy Cell Plus is, I think it's a great uh, midsole. It's basically, it, it is EVA infused with olefin. So it's got the basically responsivity and cush of EVA, but the olefin gives it a bit more, uh, I think, uh, durability and um, more resistance to the compression set. As I've noted in the Speed Cross, which also uses the Energy Cell Plus, Speed Cross on my foot just feels like a rigid brick. I've never liked that shoe, even though it's one of their better sellers. For me, it grips a little bit too tight on the midfoot and forefoot, and I'll talk about that here again in a second. But even the Energy Cell Plus that's there, I don't know, it just doesn't feel that good. It just feels too firm. So when you get into the other models that are using it, whether it be the, the Cross Pro or the Wild Cross or the S-Lab Cross, allowing the shoe to have more torsion and flexibility, I feel like really allows the Energy Cell Plus to do what it's really intended to do. So I like it. It doesn't have the soft, uh, maybe cushy underfoot feel of something like a uh, Hoka out of the box, not quite as soft as even just a, a base EVA that maybe Topo is using and or some of the other brands out here, uh, but a good blend, I think, of responsivity and enough cushion for uh, trails. The outsole uh, lug configuration is really nicely aggressive. It has the same pattern as what's, actually I'll plug a, a photo here in the review of the Cross Family lineup, uh, but the shape is basically an Atari symbol or a uh, basically sculpted uh, triangle design. I think it works really well. I liked it in the Wild Cross. I like it in the Cross Pro. It offers quite a bit of multi-directional uh, grip and stability, and it's spaced wide enough where I think on only one run, I happen to catch one stone uh, somewhere between them. Otherwise, it sheds mud, sheds uh, rocks uh, pretty well. So I like the outsole uh, design. Uh, so the, and the outsole rubber, uh, they're using ContraGrip TA, uh, designed for uh, in the Salomon lineup to offer exceptional traction over um, loose and wet uh, ground. Uh, I did do, and um, you can find it on our page and YouTube channel, I did do a head-to-head -head comparison of some of the best outsole rubbers that are out there. I think I took 10 of the, the major ones and I put them head-to-head -head over one of the slickest surface surfaces, which is uh, basically a slick uh, bluestone and shale in gorge crossings um, with waterfalls and creeks, which is kind of behind my house. Uh, I've traveled all over and that's still some of the slickest terrain that I've ever been on. So I took the outsole rubber head to head. Uh, ContraGrip TA performs pretty well. It's not in the top tier. It's not as sticky as uh, what Innovate is using with their graphene. Uh, not quite as sticky as what the top or the most grippy outsole in the market uh, is with the uh, VJ Max and their butyl rubber up there. And it wasn't quite as sticky as uh, what ASICS is using. And ASICS was kind of my big surprise of that test uh, with their ASICS grip outsole. Uh, but it'll work and do just fine in the vast majority of conditions for the vast uh, majority of individuals. Um, Chassis, so the overall kind of shape or the platform that the shoe is set on. The, uh, well one, as a part of this, uh, as I may have mentioned in the specs in the beginning, it does not have a rock plate. Some of the Salomon models have used Profil film in the past. Uh, it's not listed and I don't believe, or I'm fairly certain it's not in here. Uh, and I'll plug a clip here of me bouncing up and down on a pretty sharp uh, sapling root, or a uh, stump rather. Uh, basically something that should have impaled the shoe uh, and you can just see the bounce of the midsole absorbing it uh, and I got no uh, discomfort out of it. I noticed it of course but no discomfort and so for those of you who have listened to my reviews uh, in the past I feel that rock plates are way overused and way oversold and pretty much unnecessary so long as the shoe has enough stack height and at least some uh, torsional uh, rigidity or stability to it which the Cross Pro has. So the chassis in terms of the platform. So one of the things uh, that I looked at was the uh, width gauges or width measurements. And, and again, just measuring them with a digital caliper here. And so what I'll plug here is an image of the four shoes in the Cross family. Uh, Speed Cross will be to your left, Speed Cross 5 in this case, S-Lab Cross, Cross Pro, and Wild Cross. So when I measured the 
uh, toe box or right around your metatarsal heads or the widest part of your forefoot, uh, you'll see that the Cross Pro comes up at 106 millimeters. And that was tested from the uh, middle of the midsole uh, right about there. And 106 comes up pretty much middle of the road uh, between the Speed Cross on the narrowest side and the Wild Cross being a bit uh, wider. I probably like the volume of the Wild Cross a little bit better. Uh, but it's kind of splitting hairs and I didn't really notice the, uh, it being too much more uh, compressive or lack of volume in the forefoot of the Cross Pro. And for designing it to be a performance or race model, often companies will make it, particularly Salman, a little bit narrower in the last uh, uh, shape basically to allow it to perform better in particularly uh, descent uh, positions so that you're not uh, falling too forward into the shoe and shifting into the forefoot and hammering your forefoot. Uh, so it comes up middle of the road. Uh, midfoot, uh, the Cross Pro comes up in line with the Wild Cross, same dimension in the midfoot, which I really like. That's a really important dimension for me to allow my midfoot to drop down into it and not feel too bound or bit into. Uh, in the heel, 88 millimeters uh, versus the Wild Cross at 92, S Lab Cross at 74, Speed Cross at 84. So it comes up also middle of the road here. So it has a fairly snug uh, heel design or fairly tapered, uh, but not too. Uh, not too tight. So that's how you can see that they, they can stack up. Uh, one other measurement that I took, which you're probably not going to find anywhere else, is taking a look at the toe spring angle. This is something that one of uh, you out there, Benoit, uh, mentioned in my review of the Wild Cross when he and I were going back and forth on what we feel underneath the shoe around our metatarsals. And what I was feeling in the Wild Cross, which has a fairly aggressive uh, toe spring, is that it was splaying, I think, my metatarsals apart, and I was feeling the gap between the lugs and some extra tension, uh, basically with the uh, tendons as they were running underneath my metatarsals. And so since then, I've been more, I think, conscious of the toe spring angle and how it's playing out in some of these shoes. So in the toe spring uh, regard, the Cross Pro comes up the lowest of the bunch, uh, followed by the Wild Cross at 5% 5% greater, and then the S Lab Cross uh, at basically 25% greater, more of an angle uh, versus the Cross Pro. Uh, of the bunch, I tend to prefer the uh, Cross Pro. Um, it just feels most comfortable and relaxed underneath my forefoot. So, uh, takeaway. The Salomon Cross Pro, nailing graded bridges since 2020. Uh, I was really pleasantly surprised to uh, run the Cross Pro through some various uh, conditions and feel that the upper is really designed the way I wanted, basically a one-piece knit upper to function. Keeps debris out allows your foot to splay uh, a little bit out over the chassis, and it does a really good job paired with these SensiFit wings of keeping you secure in an off-camber uh, position. The midsole, as I mentioned, I like on the uh, Energy Cell Plus, how it works here. It's got some cushion to it uh, for trails, and um, good responsivity, and the old thing gives it a little bit more uh, longer compression set than something like a base EVA in what Topo is using as an example uh, in that Ultrafly uh, 2, which I also just recently reviewed. Outsole configuration, grippy over multiple uh, surfaces and varied terrains. I like it uh, as a full package. Uh, I think the Cross Pro is really quite slick. I realize not everybody is going to have 160 bucks uh, in the budget to spend on a pair of shoes. Uh, if you wanted the basically outsole design, responsivity, aggressiveness on the trails in a little bit uh, less expensive price point, you could probably go with the Wild Cross, a shoe that I loved. So Salomon, I think another great addition to the lineup. I am, have been pretty stoked to uh, put Miles uh, into it, and I will be excited to continue weaving it into uh, my shoe closet and repertoire. So. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in to this round. Absolutely drop a line. If you've got any questions in the uh, comments feed, I will try to follow up and answer them as quickly as I can. Thank you for your support. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking our channel. And I will catch you in the next round. All right. See you.